Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to New Super Lucky's Tale. Uh, we are super excited in the community to actually get this into ESA. Uh, we've This game came out in November, and we've been uh, tirelessly working to get a bunch of uh, skips into this game, and I'm going to be showing it off as quick as possible. Um, this is New Game Plus, so we're going to just be getting the final page in each one of the levels showing off a bunch of tricks. Yeah, and uh, hi, I'm King JO 444 I am basically Steve's rival in, like, every category. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be here right. doing commentary. So, our timer begins the second that I uh, step into the portal. So, the timing begins in... Th oh, the timing begins in 3, 2, 1, go. So, so uh, yeah. right... Right away, we're going to be uh, doing a trick that has transferred over from the Xbox version and the PC version, uh, the Xbox and PC version, which came out three years prior to this game, and it's going to be called Head Skip, or in this one, it's called Giovanni, because the guy's name is Giovanni, and this trick was actually found by somebody who doesn't actually run the game. And then after that, we're going to be doing uh, the main trick in the game that we um, will be using throughout the entire run, and if King could explain that one, that would be awesome. Yeah, so what we're going to be doing is something called bonk hopping, and this is the big exploit in this game. Uh, it's very, uh, like, it lets us get out of bounds in some areas and stuff like that, and lets us climb up any wall infinitely, even if it's an invisible wall as well. So what we do is basically, when you bonk with Lucky, if you jump and swipe or swipe and jump, you actually reset the... Uh, your bonk capabilities you can bonk again and you get a little bit of height each time you do that so this lets him climb up this uh wall just like that to skip having to do this whole escort mission with giovanni and he's also going to do it over top of this like little flame dog this would have been like a chase section it has like a little bit of a cutscene as well but if we bonk up over top of it uh it never activates and we can just skip all of it having a little bit of trouble on the the main wall i think right yep Definitely yeah, having this, trouble. The thing about this wall, this this is called Go Fetch. This is our first level, and this wall is very annoying because there's. It always seems if you're too close to the wall, it won't actually let you bonk up up it. So it's a little bit annoying to get up. And if uh, there we go, you you can also slide off the wall. You saw him do that by mistake once, and that's also very annoying as well. This is and a now, major reset point in the game, so. Uh, yeah, uh, that's the r main reason why we reset it, is because you can slide off super easy. Yeah, and like we're saying, we're doing New Game Plus. Uh, there is a All Main Levels category that isn't uh, New Game Plus. Uh, the difference between them is that, like it is, like we say with New Game Plus, you can start from a completed file and do the levels in whichever order. We also don't have to get any extra pages, we just beat the levels any percent. And you can see how abusable bonk hopping is, because you can just jump over everything. We're going to be uh, using yeah. this uh, uh, later on in the run to actually go out of bounds as well as doing a sequence break in one of the uh, levels. Yeah, th you'll be seeing us use this basically in almost every single 3D level. Uh, Lucky still has three main types of levels. There are these 3D exploratory levels, um, the 2D ones, which don't really have much bonk hopping. There's a little bit of it. Uh, and then there's automatic levels, as well as boss so, fights. So what you saw me do just uh, right there was actually, I jumped on the very edge of that uh, wooden area there. That's actually to uh, skip a cutscene that you'll uh, see um, a little Ember guy on the ground. His name is Sparky. He used to be called Lord Ember in the original game. But uh, if you jump at the very edge of it, you actually cut, uh, jump around a cutscene and we completely skip it. Yeah, and uh, one of the main differences between New Game Plus and every other category is that at the beginning of this run, uh, for any category that starts from a new file, uh, there's actually like a three minute cutscene. So if you're playing any other category, you wouldn't even start movement until about now in the run. <laughs> and there's also no cutscenes after you beat each level as well. So New Game Plus is basically just the fastest category for playing every level. So right here we have Mittens who's talking to us, and uh, this is a good time to mention while we're going through this 2D level here that there is, um, we're playing in Japanese text, and the reason why is because we haven't really timed it yet, but it seems like Japanese is the fastest language, um, just like most speedruns, because it manages to fit 
more text and uh, skip faster um, than most other languages. And any copy can actually play uh, in Japanese. You just have to go into the settings. So that's like a small time a save. It doesn't save much, but. That was a really good Aqueducts. I have a lot of trouble with this level normally. Yeah, I mean, Go Fetch was uh, <laughs> made up for Go Fetch. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like Steve mentioned, Go Fetch is a very reset heavy part, which is why mostly everybody starts off on Go Fetch in uh, New Game Plus. And you it may also be wondering helps why. Out with... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, it also helps out with routing purposes. Oh uh, yeah, because well. because if you start on go fetch and you're going all the way around uh, to the right and up and then you'll end up at the boss. Um, yeah, a lot of this run is a uh, overworld routing as well, just saving like a second or two, uh, depending on which place is faster to go and which levels are uh, closer to the boss fight at the end. Um, so, so this th oh. this level heavy heads is actually the uh, first level you would normally do in any other category besides new game plus. Um, you'll see there will be an opening cutscene where Lucky is coming out of the book. Of uh, It's called the Book of Ages, and normally after the cutscene would happen, the, you would normally just come out of uh, the book right here and start up. Yeah, and this, so is, this is a big is difference. Sorry, uh, this is a big difference between any percent and every other category, uh, because this gate that you see in front of uh, Steve here, uh, <laughs> it would normally be closed in any percent, all pages, uh, all main levels, all stuff like that where you have to start from a new file, and we would have to bonk up over top of uh, this gate to get past it. But and actually... I forgot to... It, it's, oh, it's, it's normally... Yeah, it's closed because I forgot to reset it. I forgot to just do one thing. I always forget that. But that's fine. We can show off bonk hopping a little bit. So this will lose a little bit of time because he's playing on a different account, or he didn't go through the tutorial like he was supposed to before the run started. Well, well hey, fine. there you go. Now you get to see what we all do. <laughs> you get to see it more. So that's no yeah, that's that's normally done in all categories but New Game Plus. Alright, and so basically what's happening here is uh, in this first level there are three different, uh, I call them robots, but I don't know what they really are. Um, the, the, basically they lose their heads and you have to bring their heads back to their bodies and then uh, they're in, there's one to the middle, to the left, and to the right, and we're just going to bonk up to skip everything in this level basically. Uh, now is the best time, because like this is a pretty long level with a couple cutscenes. I'm going to quickly explain something that went on recently in the community. Uh, we found out, uh, and this is also why the uh, estimate was actually recently changed, um, we found out a really fast way to uh, increase load speeds in this game. And basically, if you uh, have Lucky's Tale digitally downloaded onto your Switch hard drive, um, the game will actually load about, I think it's like five seconds faster than if you're playing on physical, right? And that saves a lot over the course of the run, considering the fact that um, this game loads every time you enter and exit a level or sub area. So, so overall, what I did with uh, what I did with that head on the left. Um, normally, what you have to do is you have to go into a burrow hole and you have to do a little bit of a, a mini game, basically, to uh, then be able to go up top. But with bonk hopping, you're able to just completely skip having to do that by uh, balancing off of the wall and going up to the that head. So now yeah, we're gonna bonk up just, up as well. Yep. Sorry if I was cutting you off. <laughs> My bad. Oh no, that you're fine. Okay, cool. So now, now we've got uh, all three of the heads, and he, they're going to awaken the golem. And uh, normally what would happen is, since this is usually the first level in the game that you play, um, we skip the cutscene where uh, Sparky gets shrunk down. Uh, this golem is the one that actually shrinks down Sparky, uh, if you play it normally. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, what I was saying before with the, uh, the loading change, um, that made a lot of us have to rebuy the game digitally. And it saves a big amount of time. Like we're we're talking about like two minutes in any percent, something like three minutes in this category. And it's brought back, uh, all right. down all the time since. All right, very nice. So, That's one of the longest levels in this world for sure. Yeah. Um. And this next level is actually a um, auto scroller level, and 
Um, originally, in the uh, one for the Xbox and the PC, these auto scrollers have no nothing uh, that you have to collect in them to do the run. So it's actually a shorter run in general. But in here, we actually have a page that we have to collect in the end. So um, Lucky's gonna be automatically running throughout this level, and all we have to worry about is jumping and diving. And that's one thing that we didn't mention was the fastest movement in this game is obviously sliding on the ground if you're not uh, if you're not uh, burrowing. If you're on a solid ground, you're able to slide. But if you uh, are on grass or dirt, you burrow, and those are the fastest movements in the game. So you want to try and do that as much as possible when you're playing this game. But yeah, uh, and, and oh, Steve's go going through this. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he's going through this uh, auto scroller level here. Um, there are three of these in the course of the run, and even though it's an auto scroller level, there are actually uh, ways that you can speed up um, Lucky's movements. Uh, he has a homing uh, dive where, if you home into these bounce pads, sometimes it can actually speed you up a little bit. Just small things like that, and making sure he bounces or he skips some bounce pads so it doesn't take uh, as much time. Just small optimizations like that in these. Uh, in these runs kind of differ the beginner runners from the people who have been running this game for a little bit now. Uh, so, what else have we not talked about yet? <laughs> in course, in terms of movement yet. Oh yeah, I uh, guess uh, we, can, we can mention the fact that he's the, the swipe move that we currently have, uh, where Lucky swipes his tail. It's a good way to actually um, keep you in the air a little bit and get you a little bit more distance if you're make, trying to make a difficult jump. And you'll be seeing that later when we do some ways to skip uh, cutscenes and puzzles. So we're going to be going uh, after this. We have now completed each one of the uh, main levels in the first world. There's five worlds in total. And so we've completed all the levels and we're going to be going to the boss. And as you can tell, our first boss will be uh, Master Mittens there. And... Uh, we call these auto scrollers without actually being auto scrollers, so um, there isn't really anything to explain until the end of the boss phase, unless you have something king. Otherwise, we can have Zonaris, um read off some donations if we have any. Just waiting for a confirmation of the co commentator. I guess I can then? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright! Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, we have $6 here from Mod366 saying, Hey Steve, good luck on your run. May the bonk hops work in your favor and the camera not glitch out. Also, shout out to Zonaris for waking up at 5am to read donations like this. With a heart. And uh, his donation goes towards naming the Latias or Latios in uh, Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire, John Cena! Thank you very much for that. And just quickly want to add on that, jokes on you for assuming that I woke up for this instead of just staying up all night long. But thank you very much for your donation. Okay, so as you can see, we can do a little bit of a, a glitch right here by just uh, dodging all of the fireballs by bonk hopping up to the top. And also, um, we're going to be standing right in this area specifically because, uh, first of all, the heads that uh, Master Mittens is going to be throwing at us will spawn right here and also if we stand right here the bouncing fireballs will bounce right over our heads so then we have uh we're gonna do this left right these will always be in the same spot so as long as you know where they're gonna be spawning then you can get there faster and then the final one here we're gonna go right left right middle right and then we're gonna do a little trick here if i can get it there we go so what I did there is I hit uh, Mittens right before he um, fell while he was in his falling animation that uh, causes him to fall faster off of the ledge and it uh, saves about a second to uh, do that. So now we are officially done with World 1. We're going to go in... We're now going to go into... Um, World 2, which is Veggie Village, and you're going to see in this one, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be coming out of the, um, we're going to be coming out of, uh, one of the levels, and normally you would be starting at the beginning of the level, 
But um, what I did beforehand is I went into the level and I exited out. And um, with doing that, it starts me right back where I want to go. And uh, in this level, we have uh, a bunny in here called Barry. And the reason we don't like Barry is because all of these uh, rabbits that are in here like to call us peasants, and we don't know why. We think it's that king uh, bunny that was there at the very beginning. However, um, it's actually Barry. So us in the community like to say, screw you, Barry. So if I could have everybody in the chat say, screw you, Barry, here. In three, two, one, screw you, Barry. There we go. I'm taking a little bit of a risky, uh, a risky strat here by uh, doing the routing that I did here. I changed this route up a little bit just uh, because I found out that it's a little bit faster to do it this way compared to having to go around normally. So right here, we're also going to say, uh, shut up, EC. Uh, this rabbit's name is Existential Crisis, or EC. We named him that because... He has the longest dialogue box in the entire game, and if you listen to him in English, he's talking about his wife and his kids and how he basically doesn't like his life at all. So we just uh, named him EC. And now we're done talking to him, and we're going to go get our last two rabbits here, and we're going to do a little bit more of a, uh, a um, bonk hop over the wall. Um, so here's our last rabbit, and normally what you have to do is you have to go and, um, <laughs> you have to go and, uh, go around and talk to the ra the king rabbit again, but we can actually just bonk hop into here and go to the wall so we, uh, are getting over to him faster. And that is the Garlic King. He's the one that's holding our... He's in the uh, Super Lucky's Tale for the Xbox and PC. He's actually the uh, main villain. But this time, he's holding the uh, page for us. Alright. So now, we are going to be going over to Egg Roll. And Egg Roll is one of the fastest... Uh, one of the fastest levels in this game because normally well in this run because normally what you have to do is you have to uh go and you have to shrink all three of the uh chickens that our next uh kitty litter member is uh tess normally uh you have to use a switch to shrink them all down but they actually have a hitbox for us to bonk hop around So, I don't know what happened to King. I think somehow he got um, out of the uh, voice chat. So, I don't know what happened there. Um, so, here's the chickens. Um, look at all those chickens. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, there he is. Heard him for a second there. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I've been cutting in and out. It's an issue right oh, okay. now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was uh, about to explain the uh, the whole thing where before the run starts, we set up how the New Game Plus levels work when we enter them and then move over to another world. And then you did that for me, so... <laughs> All right. So, uh, you saw that next member of the Kitty Litter, which is Tess, and... Me and, um, me and King are the only two that actually enjoy Tess. Everybody else does, cannot stand Tess, but she is my favorite member of the Kitty Litter. Just because her voice and the way that she acts is my favorite. Yeah, she's, uh, she's kind of like a scientist. And, uh, if you've ever played the side missions, which are the she also is who traps you in those as well. 
Um, yeah, we have a couple of mini games in here that actually play like uh, Super Lucky's Ball or Super Lucky, uh, Super Monkey Ball. Sorry, Super Monkey Ball, and uh, we just entitled them Super Lucky Ball because they play pretty much like like those games. Yeah, and you won't be seeing that in uh, this run because we don't need any extra pages because this is new game plus. But in categories like any percent or all pages, uh, you get to see those, and they have some pretty cool strats. So yeah, right. again, uh, this is a good thing to mention that setting up those levels beforehand so that you will uh, be at a certain level when you enter the, the next world, it really lets us do whatever we want for routing and uh, get whichever levels we want over with first in that world. So Being this is, yeah, this is this level, Piggy Peril, I struggle with this level in probably every single category that we, that I run. Um, it's our next 2D level, and for some reason, I struggle with it really hard. It shouldn't be as hard as I make it out to seem, but in my head, it's one of the hardest levels. Yeah, this is one of the more difficult 2D levels. Most of the 2D levels are known as being the uh, high reset points, because there's a lot of cycles that we go for in these, and if we don't make them, that can lose you up to, like, 10 seconds sometimes. Um... Since we talk about like dying and stuff like that, one thing I want to mention is in the background, as you see, those little foxes that appear out of uh, in the background, those are actually our checkpoints. And if you um, lose a heart in this game and run by those checkpoints, you actually get all of your hearts back, which is uh, really good for like like beginner runners and uh, marathon safety. So. I'm not too worried about it when it comes to losing one or two hearts because I know where each one of those checkpoints is going to be each time. Yeah, and there's also some points in this run where you're going to see him uh, fall into a pit or uh, water later on uh, just so he can death warp back to one of those, uh, to the checkpoint he was last at. So, so that was we go Peril. <laughs> Yeah, that was Piggy Peril. We go right from Piggy Peril into another 2D level. This one isn't as bad, but um, it's still a pretty um, terrible <laughs> level. Um, in some of the splits that people use, we just call it Rip Run or Rip Rollers because <laughs> it's that bad of a level sometimes. Uh, this has ruined more than enough runs for me when I'm doing an any percent run. Um Actually, all this whole area is because I have to do both Piggy Peril and this level in any percent. Yeah, if, if you hear us uh, talking about any percent, uh, any percent is much different from any other category where we only have to get a certain amount of pages needed to move on, and that's it. So, since the 2D levels are per, uh, easily the fastest, along with the auto levels, we just 100% two levels in each world and move, uh, move on and fight each boss. So this level is very much a roadblock for people learning any percent. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see that he has to worry about these cycles here. Uh, and we didn't mention this before, but with damage boosting uh, through enemies and these spike balls, uh, if you are holding the dive button or the ZR button, which is the dive and burrow um, button in this game, for some reason, you will actually keep your speed while uh, damage boosting through something, and sometimes you can damage boost through these balls at the end to make a better cycle. But it seems like uh, Steve was taking it a little bit safe, which is understandable for a marathon. All right, I made it through without a death. That's we all I'm happy about right now. Nice. Oh, we get the best level next. <laughs> yep. All right. So we're done with Ripe Rollers, which is one of the worst levels in the game, to going into probably the best level in the in the entire game, and it's called Harvest Fest. In Harvest Fest, this is where we're going to be using Bonk Copping to do a massive sequence break inside of the game. Yeah, so... Um, oh, do you want to explain it, or should I? <laughs> um, you can go ahead. All right, so basically, how you're supposed to do this level, there are three bandmates, and we're supposed to bring the band back together. And you're supposed to go get the uh, the jar character. For the, they're all worms, by the way, if you didn't know, in this world. Um, so we had to go get all three bandmates 
and you're supposed to get them in a certain order, but the way we do this, because bong copping is so abusable, we can actually get them in the complete opposite order. And that makes it so that we skip one cutscene of uh, someone showing off their talents before the actual concert begins. And they also, like, it also just makes it much easier uh, to do one of the bonk hops in this level. And this was actually found by uh, Fluffy, who runs this game, and this changed every category, basically, for Harvest Festival. Um, yeah, this, uh, this also has probably the best country band ever. If you're not a country fan, I think you might be a country fan after you hear... Uh, the greatest band to ever live, which is the Soggy Boggy Boys. Um, when that when that comes up, I I think that you will want to hear more from them. Unfortunately, we will not hear uh, more from them. <laughs> Sadly, I I want a full release of the song that they are about to do, like on YouTube or something, from the developers. That'd be so cool. So speaking uh, each... of the, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of the developers, uh, the developers of this game are actually very supportive of uh, the speedrunning community. Um, so much so that in the original Super Lucky's Tale game, uh, the director of the game actually showed us how to do a um, one of the tricks, told us how to do one of the tricks, and we named it after him. Yeah, even in the, the Switch version as well for New Super Lucky's Tale, they actually made a patch... Um... Soon after the game came out, I think like a month after the game came out, and they increased the loading speed of just the base game by itself by a lot, and that saved a lot of time overall. Not just that, um, after we found out about bonk copping, they actually added in a dialog box explaining how to do it in one of the um, cutaways that you get in between each one of the levels. Oh yeah, true. I forgot about that. So you'll see right there that... Uh, after that cutscene with that first worm, we actually got to keep playing where that first worm was. That's the one you're supposed to get last. And so the game doesn't know what to do after you do that cutscene first because you're obviously not supposed to get that worm first. So they let you keep playing up there, but everything in that area is completely unloaded. Like those trees that you saw on top of that uh, little balcony, you can't touch any of them or anything like that. You're not supposed to be there at all. So he uses that uh, platform to get a little bit of height to get over the boathouse and go do the second worm. Um, so, in the middle. so this routing that I'm doing right here is actually was actually found by me because I never knew where the uh, where all the fireflies were to, in this level. So I just just decided to route it, and um, that death warp is actually our first death warp in the entire game. Um, I found that by complete accident by dying right there and finding out that later on uh, that it could be abused. As long as we do not uh, hover over the bottom dock that was below us that I jumped around, as long as you do not hover over that, you will spawn back at that where you'll be able to continue on and grab up the seventh firefly. Also, shoutouts to the banjo worm, which is the best one. We're going to get to hear him first. This is my favorite guy. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, like I said, if you don't like country music, you just have to listen to him, and you'll understand what country is all about. This is always something I let my viewers listen to, so I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I went the right way that time. Nice. <laughs> this, this game has this weird thing where, uh, when... A cutscene fades out. If you're holding a different direction, it might change the camera, and that kind of messes with us sometimes, especially in that cutscene too. So we're right, right, so something. To this. Oh, we... no, <laughs> we're go going ahead. to. Okay, I didn't. Uh, we uh, we keep thinking like someone else is gonna mention it. Um, so right here, you're seeing that he's completely skipping a section because he hits the barrel from inside. Uh, you're not supposed to do that. Well, the game doesn't want you to do that. You're supposed to go through this whole uh, underground. Uh, section where okay, you have to uh, burrow under everything. <laughs> so right here, as you see, we're getting the third worm now, after we got that first worm. And you'll see two sheriffs just waiting for us. Those are the sheriffs we were supposed to have talked to throughout the game. But uh, instead of one, there's two now. So here is the whole band together, and they're going to perform for us. And I'm just going to have a hoedown. Like... <laughs> 
This cutscene's really good. This is the cutscene that makes me like running uh, New Game Plus in all main levels more than any percent. <laughs> so good <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> i know we're not talking but i just like hearing uh <laughs> the song all right and that is a very broken hardest fest this was actually the first level when we first got the game that we actually broke to the point where it's at right now this route has actually stayed in since basically the first uh week of this game being run yeah, this was like one of the earliest route changes to the what the main game considers you to do in any level. There's another big route change where we do things completely opposite, but that'll be in the last world of the game. So now right, we yeah. are done, and we're going to uh, Steve's girl. <laughs> yeah, in my splits when I run this, when I'm running this game, every every time any category I run, this split is called my girl because I love her so much. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to witness her for long because her boss fight is super easy, but uh, she's still awesome. <laughs> Thankfully, the test fight is a little bit um, different compared to other boss fights. Also, hey, Tess! My favorite line in the game. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right. But yeah, this, the, the test boss fight basically works like she'll bring up these levers and you just have to dodge lasers and swipe the levers, but... If you're fast enough, you never have to dodge the lasers. <laughs> um, one of the one of the things that was transferred over from the original game is if you stand in this corner or on the wooden area anywhere on here, Tess will not be able to hit you in, at all. Um, each wave, she's going to gain more. The first one, she's just going to uh, move forward like she did. The second one, she's going to hit her hand, uh, the robotic hand, uh, twice on the ground, or once on the ground, sorry, and then the third time she's gonna do it two times. So as long as you stand where you're, um, where you're, you know that the, uh, switches are going to be, as long as you stand really close to them, then you, uh, will never be hit by Tess. Yeah, and this boss fight is, a lot of the boss fights in this game are rinse and repeat, but they're also... Uh, fairly auto-scroller-like. You can't really speed up much of them, uh, except for Tess and um, uh, Jinx, the final boss fight of this game. They have the best fast strats and the most optimization that we can do. And so now he's just doing uh, the same thing one more time. And uh, these enemies that come out here, um, these bee enemies, you can actually... Uh, uh, you, you have to kill them in order to move on, uh, because... If you don't uh, kill all four of them, she won't move on to her next uh, phase. And don't worry, we'll get used to those B enemies in the next level, in the first world. Uh, in the first level of the next world, I mean. Okay, so that was Tess. Unfortunately, that's all we're going to be seeing of her. And um, we're going to be going into what. Oh, Restful Retreat. And the first world or first level in this world is actually has one of the hardest skips in the game, and we call it B skip. Um, I'm going to be trying it and showing it off, no matter how many times <laughs> it takes. Hopefully, it won't be more than once. Um, if it's done on the first try, it saves roughly 20 seconds. 20 seconds, yeah. Yeah. So what he's going to do here? This is called B skip, and I stand by the fact that this is the worst skip in the game. So basically, we have to manipulate the enemy shooting. Like, so these bees shoot little needles at us. But the thing you don't know about, some people might not know this, you can actually bounce off those needles. And they travel really far once they shoot. So we're going to manipulate this bee so that it shoots towards a certain corner of uh, this plank where of where we need to go. And we're going to do two jumps and a swipe to get a lot of distance and height so we stay above the needle. And then um, dive into it to get our jump back. Uh, jump, and then we should have enough height to be able to uh, bonk cup up the pillar and skip the entire uh, sequence 
that we would have had to do with fighting these enemies and getting a cutscene. So hopefully we get this first try. It's nice. Really cool trick. You got it first that try? That was awesome. Yes. Nice. That was beautiful too. Was it first shot too? <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay, cool. That's actually something I found. Uh, the fact that you can... Normally he's supposed to shoot one first and it doesn't usually go towards you. But if you uh, uh, do a certain dive and have enough speed, you can make it so that on his first shot that he shoots at you, you can get it off of that. So that was really good. Um, That's probably this one of the hardest tricks. <laughs> that trick was actually found by one of our runners called Adventurous Vivi. Uh, they... They found the trick, and after that, I spent about two hours trying to learn a consistent way of actually doing that trick after it was found. Um, and now that it's consistent, it was just a matter of learning how to do it faster. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's like a, something really cool about coming to this community. I recently came to the community and learned this game, I think, like a month ago now. And mostly everything was just found for me already. The only thing that I, the, the main things I contribute to this uh, this game is just like small optimizations at this point. So that right, was... next... oh. This next level is the worst level in this game. It was the worst level in the last game, and nobody in this level uh, in the community that I know of likes this level. Um, it is another 2D level, but it's this time it's vertical instead of horizontal. So yes, it's a lot is... of uh, hitting hitting cycles, and if you miss them, waiting. And it's a speed run, so you don't really we don't really like to wait. <laughs> yeah, there's two cycles we want to hit here. If uh, there's one backup and one uh, main one that we want to hit at the very end, there's a giant's. Uh, spinning blade that we want to make it underneath but if we get there while it's right in front of us there is a damage boost strat that doesn't uh, lose so much time um, because these uh, spiked rods are actually uh, solid objects that we can jump on so we can just ride it to the top but we'll see which cycle Steve gets he's already missed one of the cycles at the beginning so hopefully you get the second best one <laughs> And this level, I, I always say this, but these bounce pad things, these like star things, I always never, like, sometimes I fall in through them and stuff like that. They have a really weird hitbox sometimes. <laughs> They're a lot better than they were in the first game. It was very inconsistent in the first game. Yeah, thankfully I've never played the first game, but I've heard horror stories about it. <laughs> it's a lot more glitch heavy. There's a lot more out of bounds in Super Lucky Sale compared to New Super Lucky Sale. Cool. All right, so all the pra all, all the practice on this level paid off. Oh, nice. Oh, I didn't even know that you could. Uh, one of the things that you did, you jumped right into uh, one of those stars. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> I gotta write that down yep. in my books. <laughs> all right. And you make them. And th nice. that was latter state of the mind is what the level is called. Yeah, if you like that level, just try speedrunning the game and you'll learn to hate it. <laughs> just like the rest of us. That is, especially in all main levels and, like, the categories where you have to get even more pages than just the bare minimum. It, like, this is the worst level by far. <laughs> but next um, up is the best so level we... by far. Yep, uh, going from Ladder State of the Mine, which is a uh, vertical uh, side-scroller uh, 2D level... Uh, we will be going into another horizontal 2D level right uh, now. Um, this is one of my favorite levels in the entire game. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people aren't big fans of it, but I've, I've liked it in the first game. I like it in this one. And I've been practicing to get a little bit better optimized when running this level. I'm in the so. middle with this one. It's okay. Yeah, this is uh, Melon Madness, one of the best names, at least, for a level. <laughs> and this one's also very cycle-heavy, with these uh, platforms raising up and down. But uh, thankfully, we have a pretty consistent way to get the fast cycle. Oh, and at the very end, there's going to be a... or near the very end, around the halfway mark, actually, there's going to be a melon that's raising... or that's getting twisted into with these propellers. Uh, and... 
you're supposed to, before we used to BH up it, which is bonk hopping for those who don't know. Um, before we used to BH up it, which is uh, two of them. But I don't know if it was me who found it, but I figured it out myself that you could um, uh, just double jump and hold the jump button. It just teleports you up to the top of it for some reason. <laughs> it's a weird thing. Um, I was the one that originally found the uh, bonk or the uh, melon skip to begin with because um, I kept on dying in this level. And I was getting really annoyed, so I just tried to bonk hop over it, and it just worked. We don't... <laughs> I don't know how it works. It just pushed me up, and I was like, oh, well, that saves a little bit of time instead of having to wait for that to be screwed in. Yeah. And, and then I, I think I was the first one to do... Actually, you know, I think it was Milo, actually, who first did the double jump strat, which, again, saves a little bit of time because you don't have to be a, uh, BH up it instead. Also, sorry if you're hungry, because this level features a lot of food in it, <laughs> and the watermelons look so good. By the way, let me and know just, when, I, when you can give me a quick minute. Uh, I think we're ne going, the next level, we're... after the next level is an auto-scroller level, so that's like the yeah. best time, we'll let you know. <laughs> yep, that'll, that'll be the best time, because this level has a lot of stuff that has to be explained, and I'm going to be focusing, and I'll have Kane explain this level. Yeah. There's a lot that happened to this level recently, uh, over like the past few months. Now, uh, keep in mind, this game's only been out for like a few months now, uh, since November of 2019. It's crazy how far this game has come since just those few like six months at this point now. I'm very interested to see if anything new comes up in the next like month or so. But currently, I think this game is as broken as it's going to be. But this level by far is the most broken. Uh, so this is called Peaceful Place. It's supposed to be like this test of strength where um, there's a bunch of spikes and stuff like that, and you have to go uh, platform from place to place hitting different switches, but we can skip a lot of that. There's basically this ending section where you're supposed to hit two switches um, to open up this giant skull rib cage uh, to let you progress forward. But what we can do is we can bonk up over top of an invisible wall, and if you get high enough, you can jump over the skull, which we call skull bonk hopping, and it's basically... In my opinion, it's the hardest bonk hop strap, other than uh, Haunting Ham Skip in any percent. And it's, it has like a weird invisible wall to it where you can't bonk up too close to the skull. But basically, the skip's having to watch two 20 second cutscenes, and it also skips having to go from side to side. So, overall, I think this saves over a minute, and I'm gonna hope he gets it first try. And then, along with that, there's also one other cool thing. This is like the only glitch that I've found in this game. Um, and it makes no sense. Don't ask me why it works, but basically we're going to be riding up this elevator here after he does skull bonking, and there's going to be a bunch of enemies spawning, and the, the ones that spawn at the very end, the last wave of enemies that spawns, are these uh, bomb-throwing enemies called bomb cats. And for some reason, if you throw your... I did this by accident, by the way. I found this by complete accident during a GDQ submission um, video. And I just... I, I just love how... Apparently, you can throw your camera to the left into the wall, and it'll kill them without you having to fight them at all. We have no idea why it works, but it does. <laughs> so, there we go. you'll see it right here. That was that was the glitch. And that's the level. That's uh, a very hard level, for sure. This and B-Skip make uh, World 3 one of the worst worlds in New Game Plus. As, as well as Melon Madness. Some people can say, like, Melon Madness is pretty... Um, tough with too. Yeah, Melon Madness, for some people, is a little bit difficult. And uh, right, now we so just have an auto-scroller. <laughs> yep, yep, so we're going into another auto-scroller, so if you want to, you can go ahead and read donations. Uh, yeah, I'd like to take the time real quick to remind everybody, if you look at the very bottom of the stream, it says sub points 561 out of 800, which is visual representation that every subscription you make on this channel gets matched by our sponsor HyperX. So uh, like for the, the first 800, so every single sub, our partners HyperX will give an additional $2.5. So if you haven't subscribed yet, this is an awesome way to support ESA. Uh, you can also gift subs, those count. And if you still have your free Twitch Prime sub, you know, feel free to leave it here. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, yeah, back to you guys. All right. All right cool. uh, 
yeah, there's not a lot of explaining to do. Um, the route that I'm taking mostly is going to be the route that we do for the all pages and, well, basically any any category besides the New Game Plus. So this is this uh, routing is basically the same in every single uh, category that we do. Yeah, and so we should mention that these conveyor belts here, uh, it's pretty obvious, but uh, when a conveyor belt is going against you, you want to jump so you don't stay on it as much. If it's going toward something upwards, you want to walk on it. And if it's going down, you want to slide on it, and that gives you a huge boost of speed. And so, just like we mentioned before, um, these levels, even though they're auto-scrollers, there are time to save in them, which is great, <laughs> because auto-scrollers suck, usually. And All yeah, right. there we go. <laughs> it's hard to think Very of stuff to say, especially in these levels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's nothing really, it's just always just um, running forward, since you don't have to push forward the entire time uh, Lucky runs. So it's just a matter of what feels the most comfortable with you, and if you're able to, uh, if you're able to save yourself. Um, a lot of that's one thing with the bonk hopping in this game, and um, Lucky in general with his lock-ons. Um, a lot of the times, if you get uh, screwed over by like enemies moving, or you just miss a jump in general, um, you will. Uh, Lucky could have a chance of. Uh, hitting a wall and you're able to bonk hop up or he'll lock onto an enemy that just happens to be there Yeah, and I just want to call Steve out on this though But uh, you did your any percent brain kicked in and you got 300 coins in that auto scroller level So uh, that's uh, that's fine <laughs> I, I, I figured it doesn't I would. change anything <laughs> It doesn't change anything luckily, but uh, that, that is kind of funny to me Again all you get a page in this game for uh, finding a hidden secret uh, collecting the L-U-C-K uh, Y letters and collecting 300 coins in each level. As well as completing the level, obviously. Yeah, there's four pages in each level, basically. And so this is uh, General Buttons and uh, Lieutenant Fluff and stuff. Uh, in my opinion, these are, these are my second favorites of the bosses that we fight, just because Fluff and stuff is so derpy. <laughs> And so uh, this this is where a little bit of RNG comes into play. Um, none of the um, none of these fireballs will be random, but where the bombs are thrown at us and placed uh, can either gain us or lose us one second, depending on where they actually are. I hold the record of having the worst RNG of this boss like every time I always get four, uh, three in the back and none in the front. You want them to be in the front because they take less time to get the ship. When they shoot the bombs at you and it's completely random like you mentioned and you can see right now this is the wonders of bomb copping we don't have to do any of the dodging <laughs> all right let's see where we get come on rng uh nope that was bad uh <laughs> usually we have i have never seen a run of this game where we get three in the front that will be the god rng i think it's like i think it's possible it's just very very rare <laughs> So normally what you have to do on these bomb cats is you have to wait for them to, um... Oops. Thanks, Fluff. Yeah, normally you have to wait for these to spawn in and throw a bomb at you to kill them, but we can just swipe them as they spawn in. Okay, so the developers decided to leave a little message for us in the game here, um, and I want to show it to you. So we have L... U... C, K, oh, Lucky, Lucky, okay. That's, That's nice. us. <laughs> We're lucky. In there. Lucky smells? That's not nice. Uh, it's probably maybe gonna they're going to say something else. It's probably going to oh, say good no, after, right? It, no, no, it's just Lucky smells. What? I refuse so, to. Uh, so, the thing, the story behind that is in the original game, there was like a 3% or smaller chance uh, for in this fight that message to show up in the fight um and they wanted it so bad that in this game they just decided to have it show up every single time so these uh these fireballs are actually never random but in the original game they are yeah that just shows this game uh the devs sense of humor <laughs> in this game come on lucky what are you doing there we go well lucky smells now he can't do the boss right he's very hurt that was weird. Yeah, I saw you got hit by that. 
weird bomb cat. I see what you mean. You got hit by fluff and stuff. Yeah, for the most for the most part, when we're dodging uh, fluff and stuff, when he's bouncing around here, you can just walk in a circle, <laughs> and you will like never get hit. All right, so we're on to the fire. Um, I have a very small chance, like minuscule chance, of getting hit here, but I don't plan on doing that uh, because the last phase is just hitting the final bomb here. Okay, so as you saw. If you wait a little bit too long there, uh, it will fly way up into the air if you're uh, bonk hopping and falling down, which was unfortunately a little bit of time loss. But, uh. Okay, um, so you got that, that is. Bad. That is. Yeah, I got too bad. Um, that is the b b buttons and fluffy fight. And, yeah, usually, uh, usually that's what people average. Either two in the front or two in the back. It's never one. It's never like all three usually that's very rare and a shout out to fluffy prower one of our runners of the game i golded that split somehow i don't know why but anyway <laughs> nice um, um fluffy prower who uh put that split name as fl uh buttons in me <laughs> and i find it really i find it really funny i gotta change my split name <laughs> buttons and fluffy so now we're moving on to our fourth world. Uh, this is actually a DLC world from the original game. This is called Gilly Island. And it was originally a DLC for Super Lucky's Tale, but because this is basically the definitive edition of new Super, er, of Super Lucky's Tale, uh, it includes it and the other DLC, Foxington, uh, in the base game. And fortunately, in New Game Plus, or in every category but 100%, we do not have to do Foxington. Which is very fortunate because it's not that great of an area. Foxington so, uh, is so bad. I don't... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so shout shout out to uh, Octodad that you saw there. Uh, we managed to have uh, uh, Octodad in this game, as well as this being a better version of Sorry uh, Bonk's uh, Revenge Runners, uh, but we have the better Bonk game. Um, and then we are going to run into one more, um, reference coming up later on. Yeah, and this route that he's doing, this level's called Carrying the Talent, where we have to, uh, destroy, uh, six sets of Meow Malade, who is the boss of this world. Uh, she set up these speakers with her hypnotizing music to make everybody dance. Uh, and we want to help this little, I don't know what he is, he's like a snake. <laughs> we gotta so, help once it... Once again, I managed to find a um, death warp in this game where, um, once again, I was really bad at the game and I managed to find it by accident. So, oh no, did they do, do that? It lagged at the worst time, hopefully. <sighs> it doesn't do it. Oh, I hope that didn't mess it up. It might have. So, uh, that... Oh, it did mess it up. Okay. Um, that's one thing to point out in this game. The lag, it can very much screw you over big time here uh, in this game. If it looks like the stream is lagging, it's probably not. It's probably uh, just the game lagging because it likes to do that at the worst times possible most of the time. So um, what you're normally supposed to do there is uh, land, land up top where I was and do that dive down to the little area there and destroy the speaker. And when you destroy that speaker, you just fall off the edge and you spawn right back up to where uh, I originally got that checkpoint. Yeah, and what he was saying earlier with the lag, uh, that's something we call lag spiking. And sometimes it can help you, like sometimes it skips uh, text boxes, which we actually saw earlier, I think in Harvest Festival, uh, it skipped you a text box, but sometimes it does that and uh, it's more of a hindrance for the most part, sadly. Hopefully it gets patched out in some sort of patch eventually, but I, I don't see it being patched out. <laughs> so, yeah, right. we just have two more, and then we have one really cool skip coming up, which is called Octodad Skip. Um, Now, uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to Edgy the Hedgy. I don't know if he's watching or not, but Edgy was the one that managed to find this Octodad skip. Um, 
by just doing the game normally, he normally in this area, what you have to do is you have to talk to the octopus dad and you have to find his three kids because he's managed to lie, uh, lose them and they're hiding by being camouflaged. However, you if you go up here and you do a jump around the uh, the text of uh, the dialogue box and then you uh, bounce over there if I can get it. There we go. We just completely skipped having to ta uh, talk to him, find the three kids, and then have another dialogue box where he uh, builds up the floaties for you to get across over to that area. Yeah, and that's the last of uh, speakers, and that'll warp us back to the page for this level. I, I do want to mention that uh, that jump that he did across uh, the boardwalk there to the beach is much harder than he made it look. You have to space out your jumps and swipe to get enough distance just to barely make it. And also shout um, out to the time and... that Steve... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and like again, shout out to uh, Edgy, the Hedgy. Uh, he couldn't find the three children in the main game, so he did that trick casually when he was playing the game. <laughs> Which still freaks me out. How do you do that casually? That's so weird. <laughs> Anyhow, so... Yeah, like I was saying, uh, that jump is a lot difficult, and Steve a lot more difficult than he made it look. And Steve actually uh, showed off something in one of his runs one time that kind of freaked me out. If he, uh, there's no collision in the bottom half of that island that he uh, skipped over to, and if you go inside of it, it just teleports you on top of it. And I've never seen that other from him, other than him. So I've level... had multiple. I've had multiple different things happen to me that's happened to nobody else. <laughs> um, I will explain it um, coming up in the next world after this. Um, now, this level uh, is called Trapped in Paradise, and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to hit five different uh, umbrellas because it's super hot here, and you have to uh, cool off everybody by hitting them and making them go down. But um, I did a category in this game called... Uh, New Game Plus, no bonk hopping, and uh, the route that I uh, managed to do in it actually made me find new ways of going around this area, which is very weird uh, for not bonk hopping over some places. Like, originally, um, I would go around to get to this area and bonk hop over that, but you can actually just go under that to save a, a couple of seconds, and then... Uh, Normally you can uh, go on top of these walls here uh, and bonk, uh, uh, hop across. Okay, now we're... Oops. That sheriff is very annoying. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I can never tell when so, I have to stop skipping his deck box. <laughs> Some of these strats I've actually never seen because, yeah, like Steve said, he learned these strats from No Bonk Up. Which is, by the way, do not run that category. <laughs> None of us run it, except we, like, Steve and Edge G ran it once just to say that they've done it and they both regret it. Alrighty, and, there you go. and that, is, that is the end of Trapped in Paradise. This is such a good way to show off how overpowered Bonk Hopping is because you can literally skip all of the maze that you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> And yeah, there we go. We're gonna move on to our uh, next, our, uh, our second last 2D level of this game, which is gonna be three cannons. And uh, this has a pretty cool bonk hop strat in it. This is one of the few bonk hop strats in a 2D level, um, where we go on top of this cabana, uh, and we call and, it cabana skip. And the thing about this skip, it was found by uh, somebody else in the community. And uh, that's why I like that's why I like this uh, the Super Lucky's Tale community so much is because it's a col uh, collabor uh, a collaboration of a bunch of different uh, runners and players just finding uh, glitches and tricks casually and uh, showing it to it uh, showing it to us so we can put it into runs and figuring out the best way that it can go in. Yeah, I think almost everybody in the community has contributed something to this game. Uh, whether it be like small optimizations or big skips and stuff like that. Also, I, I always like calling out Steve on this, but he did mention that he did a no bonk hop run 
Uh, I was actually, we were in chat one time, or I was in chat when he was doing it for the first time. And you don't know how hard it is to not bonk hop when you're so used to it. And so Steve, many times, has done that run and just out of instinct bonk and copped and people have called him out for it. And in this level, he did cabana skip without even realizing that he did it. And someone who didn't even run the game called him out on it. <laughs> so I find that funny. If you, were, if you learn this game, and I highly suggest people uh, try out this game speedrunning um, with the Discord that we have. We are very helpful and stuff like that. But if you learn this game, please learn the unrestricted categories. Don't learn no BH. <laughs> It's this uh, this community is uh, super helpful and um, I originally started this uh, speed run on the original Lucky's or Super Lucky's Tale and it was such a small community and once the second one came out it just grew um, a lot and it's so much fun to just see new runners coming in constantly and. Um, Getting into the game. Oh, nice. That was really good. Nice. <laughs> good fight. Yes, yeah, so this yes, little boss okay. fight here. This mini fight, you have to defeat these barrels, uh, which will sink the ship. There's a, there's a few fast ways of doing this, but for the most part, you just kind of have to hope that the first cannon shot goes into that barrel that Steve got. <laughs> cool, cool. Cool. <laughs> All right, so this next boss fight is Lady Miamalade. Oh, um, no. <laughs> she has probably the best music in the entire game, and it's also uh, King's worst enemy because Ugh. he, during the during one of our races, before the last marathon, we actually uh, we were racing, and he ended up dying during this fight. <laughs> I um, I'm known for dying to stupid things in this boss. <laughs> so. Uh, oh yeah, there's also, this boss also I found rec well, I found myself recently, uh, it was actually known from other people, but that no one told me, but there's like this weird death plane above this boss fight, um, you can actually bonk up on any of the walls in this boss arena, and if you bonk up high enough and then go to the center of the stage, there's just a weird death plane that'll kill you even if you're at three hearts of health. <laughs> so yeah, there, right, this is me so on the yeah, this is Miamalade. It's a lot of uh, doing the same thing over again. You have to wait in the blue areas of the uh, floor, which are random where it's going to spawn each time. And then she's gonna. her next phase is going to be um, sending out these lasers. And this first phase of the lasers, if you spawn in the same two spots, you will never get hit by the lasers, no matter how hard you try. Um, <laughs> and then you can hit her three times, and you'll be done with the phase. So... Um, Honestly, um, this is a time that we could, if you have any donations, you could actually read them. Uh, Alright, first of all, I would quickly like to thank Famicom Zoomer, I, I am Kaolin, and Mighty Taco 311 for their subs and chat. We really do appreciate that. And I would also like to remind everybody that we have some cool donation incentives for some upcoming games. For example, uh, Ninja Gaiden, which is coming up not too uh, soonish, kind of like soonish. Uh, you can choose between uh, the voice language of the game, between English and Japanese, where English is currently winning with 98 to the 15 of Japanese. So if you want to hear some uh, Japanese, get those donations in. And right after Ninja Gaiden, you have Pokemon. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, which has a ton of different incentives. So, uh, yeah, you can choose a lot of things in the upcoming few hours with some donations, guys. So, check it out over at uh, donations at ESA.com. Thank you. So, um,. One of my favorite things, I destroyed him a little bit too early so, uh, for you to see it, but one of my favorite things about this uh, about this boss fight is both the uh, heads that are in this, as well as the bees, are dancing to the music, which is a real banger, if you ask me. <laughs> a real banger. I actually never knew that. I never pay attention to them. <laughs> That's kind of funny. 
<laughs> Even I, you learn something new every day of running this game. <laughs> so yeah, the, like we mentioned earlier, uh, there is a lot of, uh, the boss fights are basically just auto-scrollers, so you kind of just have to deal with them in every category. We are actually working on a, um, making a category extension leaderboard for this game, and one of the categories we want to make is a new game plus no bosses, which would be kind of cool <laughs> to see if it ran. It'll be under an hour for sure. <laughs> and there's Meowmelee moving on to Hauntingham, our last world of the game. Well, of the run. <laughs> of Yeah, of the run. So, unfortunately, this run is coming to an end, um, but we're going into... Probably one of the most changed levels compared to the uh, Super Lucky's Tale on Xbox and PC. Um, normally in this level, what you have to do is uh, you have to find three children that are lost um, from the mother. And you have to go and save them, which in turn we actually just skip in the speed run. But in this one, we have to get three tickets for our friend um, Clive, Bark uh, Clive the Barker or... As I said, uh, another appearance by somebody famous is Clive Barker. So we have Octodad, we have uh, uh, Clive Barker, and it, there's also in this, if you play casually, um, we also have a Donkey Kong level, so we also have a reference to Donkey Kong in this as well. So, um, yeah, hopefully I can do the skip, Clive skip here. Ooh, that was a close leg. <laughs> Black spikes are never nice to us or in our favor. Yeah, so cool. this basically skips uh, what he's doing right now. He bonk hops around the outside of the cutscene's trigger, and basically what's going to happen, he's going to get the three tickets he needs to open up the page. You need to collect three tickets by doing different things and objectives, um, which Steve actually optimized recently um, within the past few months. And... Once we have all three of those, we can actually combine the two uh, Clive Barker text boxes because we'll be closer to the. It'll bring us closer to where the page is. And so, so yeah. uh, this this routing is actually the fastest routing that you can do because this first one is over here by itself, which then we can head over to uh, the gypsy over here who has now lost the uh, her gypsy ball her fortune telling ball so you can we'll head over this way and the gypsy fortune teller ball will always be in the same spot so while we're over here unlocking the uh the crystal ball we're going to go and get our second ticket which is to hit ooh whoa lag <laughs> uh is to hit uh all these bumper cars here and get the coins off of them there we go now give them a ticket yeah <laughs> It will grab this ticket, and then we're going to take the uh, the crystal ball back over to the gypsy. And then we'll grab our third ticket, and it just happens to be the fastest route, because all the other tickets happen to be um, a chicken race, which can be quite slow. Um, doing, like, a uh, whack-a-mole sort of thing. Uh, and then a jinx fight which can take a little bit, which we actually use in the any percent route. We actually do um, the 300 coins, and the uh, this world is actually the only world in the entire game that the routing stays the same. We go through each one of the levels, uh, the first two levels in this world, in all the categories. Yeah. Because um, normally in the story here... Um, the train, which is the next level, Terror Train, is actually blocked off from everybody being able to get in, so you have to complete the level. Um, so we have to do the first two levels in order to uh, do that. Uh, um, unblock that. Also, I'm going to call out Steve in this uh, as well, because this game has a lot of weird uh, soft locks and uh, camera locks that can happen in this game if you've never seen them. Uh, and one of the things that I still have never figured out how he made it happen when he was talking to Clive here uh, one time it, it just completely froze on him and it was a complete hard lock he had to reset his game we don't know how it happened it's never happened since never happened to anybody else but uh, yeah is <laughs> I've I've saved that trick or saved that soft lock and still to this day we have no idea how it happened 
there's also a camera lock that can happen where when you bring back the crystal ball to the uh, the fortune teller, if you talk to her while uh, the cutscene is going on, uh, the camera will get glitched afterwards and you won't be able to see Lucky. I've had the same thing happen in three cannons back in Gilly's Island and uh, it basically happens whenever you uh, interrupt a cutscene and it's really weird. <laughs> so this so, little terror uh... train is... Uh, it's something. <laughs> it's it's probably the one of the fastest levels in the entire game, and it's one of my favorites because it's just a straightforward, really quick, uh, op uh, trying to optimize this level sort of uh, run through. And this is definitely a speed run level, if you can say there's a specific speed run level in in the game, and that this happens to be it. And again, conveyor belts are here too, so like, like, stuff like, even small optimizations like sliding on conveyor belts that are going in the right direction can save, like, towards a second or half a second. We have a, there's a few people who run ILs in this uh, game, and those people really like to optimize where you slide and where you burrow and stuff like that, and this level is crazy with that kind of stuff. So only one mishap there, but that was a pretty decent terror train. Very nice. And now we have one more long level, uh, like the 3D level, and then we have an auto level, and then the final boss. So this next level has actually um, gotten a little bit of a um, reroute because of two people. One is King for finding a faster bonk hop at the beginning of the level, and another uh, major routing difference from uh, Adventurous Vivi in our community. Um, normally you have to go, in this level, you have to go from right to left. Um, but we are going to go from left to right. This, this in turn skips multiple cutscenes. Actually, like, three or four cutscenes, it seems like. And, um, it's just faster in general. It saves one really big cutscene as well, where, uh, Jinx will drop a bunch of his, uh, Jinx boxes into a, uh, into the water, which basically covers up the page that you're trying to get. And we skip that entire cutscene from not talking to a ghost um, that's at the bottom. We never have to go down and talk to him at all. And also, this has the best spoken line of any voice actor in this game, in my opinion. Spookaboo. <laughs> yeah, we forgot to admit. Yep. Uh, we... That's one reason why um, we really like these... Uh, we like these ghosts because their voice logs are Spookaboo and Spookaboo Ba, Spookaboo Pa. So yeah, this uh, bonk hop that he's doing, I I actually figured this out because I did not like how we used to do it. We used to go to the right side of the building and it required a bonk hop that uh, we had to go a little bit outside and hold back in order to uh, get fully on top. But I found out that that skull on top of that uh, building actually is physical that you can stand on. So that makes it so you don't have to uh, be aged up most of it. So these graves actually have to be um, hit in a specific order. You'll um, you'll see the number of candles on top of the grave. They have to be hit um, one through five with the candles. Yeah, and so this is, uh, again, just like, uh, this is very reminiscent of Harvest Festival. You have to do specific things to make ghost the ghosts be okay to go down and help you push down the blocks. So as you saw, those ghosts were actually uh, uh, protecting or pushing away nothing. Um, because we're going in the opposite order and we didn't get the uh, cutscene for the boxes to be dropped, um, until we got that ghost, uh, the box wasn't technically there. And unfortunately, um, we cannot get the ticket uh for the end of the level until we get all the ghosts. Otherwise, we would have been able to go that back way and um, get the ticket because that's where we are uh, not ticket uh, the page. Yeah, but sadly, it's uh, it's blocked off. Like it, it won't even exist until you actually knock down all the blocks. We've tried it before because there is a way to get on top of the uh, um, the cubes, but it doesn't really do anything. There's a lot of really big skips in this game. One of them we'll probably show off if we have some extra time afterwards, called uh, um, HH Skip, which actually skips this entire level in any percent, and the next one as well. 
And yeah, so that's the second ghost. We had to turn on these lanterns here. We do them in a specific order, just so it's faster. And we end with that last one over uh, uh, across the uh, moving bridges or moving um, uh, piles of dirt because it'll teleport us back to uh, the mainland afterwards. And now we have this uh, ghost who wants us to fight a bunch of enemies. And for some reason, um, when he gets to the part where there's these boxes he has to fight, uh, the game lags out like a lot. <laughs> So I've practiced this end area quite a bit, so a lot of this uh, moving around is optimized for how I uh, do the uh, get rid of these enemies the fastest. Oh yeah, and those um, those pumpkin enemies um, that we've been fighting that blow up afterwards, I actually found a kind of cool glitch with them, um, and it's one of my favorite glitches in this game. It doesn't do anything, but if you blow up uh, one of the pumpkin boys that, that I call them, uh, and then enter a cutscene, they will... Their hitbox will stay the same, but their heads will appear super gigantic, <laughs> and it's funny. Um, there's also a glitch we don't, we've don't we had happen before uh, where, um, don't know how it happens, uh, if, instead of the heads just stopping and exploding, they'll shoot way up into the air, and then they'll explode up in the air. Don't know why it happens, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> I've personally never seen it. I've only seen uh, it happen to Steve. Again, Steve has had the weirdest things happen that I've seen from no one else. <laughs> also, shout okay. out to Lucky Shades in this level. <laughs> um, so, there's a tendency for me to die in this next auto-scroller. Um, I've died in this auto-scroller at one of the marathons as well as a practice race with King. So I'm just hoping I can get past this without having to worry about <laughs> that death. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is our last auto-scroller for the game. So if there's one last um, donation reading or any announcements, go for it. Uh, yeah, of course I will do that. So for anybody who might have just joined in the last few minutes... Uh, this is ESA Together. This is a week-long online marathon that will feature speedrunners and square attackers from all around the world. Uh, we invite everybody to he uh, here at ESA, if it's an, a regular or a first-timer, uh, showcasing all of their best. Uh, ESA Together is supporting ESA and our other affiliate events, increased costs due to the uh, coronavirus outbreak, unfortunately. And yeah, you can donate towards ESA together, or you can subscribe, gift subscribe, Amazon Prime subscribe, you can cheer, all of those will help. Uh, if you can't really put in any monetary value, which is understandable during these hard times, it's also greatly appreciated if you just tell your friends, or maybe leave a host, or just anything that you can think of is greatly and highly appreciated, guys. And Thank you so much for so far raising $7,409 and having more than 550 sub points. That is pretty amazing, guys. Give your give your guys uh, some claps in chat. You guys are amazing. And yeah, back to this awesome run. All right. Thank you. So uh, there's this is our last little area here, and it looks like I managed to not die in a marathon for the first time. Let's go. This level. <laughs> <laughs> and I managed to get 300 coins. <laughs> yep, uh, of course, <laughs> because it's you. <laughs> um, oh yes, so uh, before well, before we get into like the end game portion, we should probably plug in saying like, if you want to run this game, we are a very accepting community, like we mentioned before. I'm actually working um, uh, on making separate uh, uh, tutorial videos for each category um, if you want to get into them. We also have a Discord that you can join with a bunch of helpful uh, glitch hunters and uh, runners of the game if you really want to get into any specific category. So, yeah, if you have this game on Switch, you can join us. <laughs> it's a very fun game. And okay, very glitchy. so there's a, tra there's a tradition when I run this game. I have to do the voice audio for this yes. last area. <laughs> Oh, we should have prepared this. I could have done Lyra's voice. Lucky, I... <laughs> over here. Lyra, how did you get into the book? She didn't. Foolish child. 
foolish child. Best line. <laughs> Jinx! I've been waiting for you, Lucky Swift Tail. I really must thank you. The book is finally mine! Also, I think you're on PB pace now that I'm looking at the run. <laughs> Alrighty. So this is Jinx. Uh, he has three different phases, and we have a little tiny trick that was found by... Uh, once again, the uh, the name of Edgy the Hedgy. Uh, he was doing this in his cat. He accidentally found a faster way to hit Jinx in this game um, when he was playing uh, one of his speed runs. Uh, normally, what you have to do is you have to go through these three phases, and um, then you have to hit Jinx. But when you hit him, he will fly off of the stage, and then you have to wait for him to go back onto the stage. But um, if you manipulate him in the right way, you're actually able to hit him all three of his times uh, that uh, you would need to do normally. And you'll be able to finish that phase a lot faster. Yeah, and Jinx is pretty RNG dependent with where he shoots these rings and which uh, uh, these tiles he moves. And also I'm going to call myself out. I'm going to give a shot at myself that I was dumb one time. And uh, when he raised, um, or sorry, when he pushed, he pulled one of the uh, slivers out. You can either pull them out or push them back um, to change up the terrain. And I was stupid, and I thought that he moved two forward. <laughs> because he moved one backwards. So yeah, that's the so Jinx this... manipulation. So this is the second phase now, and um, his lasers are a lot shorter this time. So as long as you stand really far away from him, they will just disappear by the time you get to him. Um, and another thing about this fight is it was actually um, made to easier than it was in the original game. In the original game, they actually made it a little bit too hard for people, so they actually made a patch in the original game first to make him a little bit easier, and then they made him into this, in this uh, version of the game. And I'm just going to give a warning, uh, the time is going to be in like two to three minutes-ish, so just a heads up. Yeah, t timing will be when I lose control, uh, after I get Jinx on the third phase. Yeah, it it'll actually be afterwards, after Jinx, uh, dies, there's, like, there's going to be a cutscene, and then there's, uh, when he enters the Book of Ages is when the time ends. And this won't be world record, but I think this might be PB for you. <laughs> Possibly. There we go. That's. And if we didn't mention it before, the world record for New Game Plus currently is a 122.05. It's been brought down tremendously because of the new loading system. So Jinx on the final phase is a little bit different. He's going to be... Uh, uh, first off, he's going to send out a few rings, but then he's going to raise up the terrain already, and he's just going to chase us around with his lasers. Um, and then after defeating some enemies, when we're going to attack him, the manipulation doesn't really work this time, because he's going to split into three different jinxes, and we have to defeat all of them. So it's a little bit different for the final phase, to make it a little bit more clean. Oh, you lag. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Please don't die on jinx. <laughs> I have died on Jinx. Uh, I think everybody's died on Jinx at least once in their runs. There we go, we're safe. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and each Jinx that dies, they give you a heart back. Thanks. Alright, time is coming up. Not now. Whoa, that's a weird... Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, three. Three, two... One time. GG. That's a 123. And, yeah, that's a 123.03, and that's actually a PB for me on this game. Good job, man. Nice. We destroyed our estimate <laughs> because of the new loads. <laughs> yep. Yep, the new loads. Uh, I originally submitted this game when the loads were uh, super uh, long and worn out because of the physical version, but now this is on the digital version. And um, 
do you know, Zonorus, do we have enough time? Would I be able to show off a couple of things? Uh, depends on how much you mean by... Um, I just have two, I just have like two things that I want to show off. Um, wait, seven minutes underestimate, yeah, sure, go ahead. Alrighty. <laughs> We just went a little underestimate. It's nothing too big. <laughs> Keep in mind, our original estimate was going to be a 135, so that would have been horrible. <laughs> and and about two days before my run, after I got the digital, I got the digital about two days ago, um, I contacted them and asked them if it was possible I could lower my estimate by five minutes. Yeah, and I've been going on a spree, actually, recently, because of the whole lowering of the times. We've been improving the world records for every single category, uh, including any percent, um, and since then I've actually uh, done a full board sweep of the game, <laughs> which felt pretty so, good. So one thing that, uh, speaking of any percent, this first trick I'm going to be showing you is one of the tricks that um, King talked about earlier on, which is called HH skip or Haunting Hand skip. Um, this is used only in the any percent run of the game. Um, what you normally have to do here is, uh, you saw the regular way of actually going through this, uh, game, but, uh, in any percent, you only need to collect four pages in order to unlock the final Jinx fight. And, oops, I accidentally went into the level. That's fine. <laughs> oh no. It's just, that's fine. Um. It's just what you're used to. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to that, but, um. What you normally have to do is get the four pages and then do those last two levels. However, in any percent, um, we are going to be skipping the last two levels, which is Grave Awakening, one of the longer levels, and uh, our last Auto Runner level by doing a specific bonk hop um, up a wall that um, you normally wouldn't be able to get over unless you have a lantern. Yeah, and the I just want to call out... I just want to call out that both me and Steve learned this trick at the exact same day because after the first marathon showing that this game had, uh, we were just showing stuff off separately. We were doing a race uh, and just randomly I was like, I'm going to try Haunting Ham Skip and I got a first try and then Steve that night also got it uh, consistently. So we've been running any percent ever since then. <laughs> so basically okay, what you're so seeing him do is uh, he's... Bonk hopping up what should be an unbonkable wall. Um, if you bonk up or try to bonk up up this wall uh, normally, what's going to happen is you're going to get like maybe two or three bonk hops and then you're going to slide and then fall in the water. But if you get enough distance away from the wall by either letting the control stick go, ne uh, go, go neutral or doing what Steve's doing where he rocks back and forth for timing and uh, <laughs> twiddles his... Um, control stick around in a circle, uh, you can bonk up here as long as you make sure that you give enough space in between bonks. And then you can jump off this tree to skip the second, uh, the auto-scroller, and that skips two really long levels for any percent. And then after you have the four pages, you would just uh, go right into the last Jinx fight there. Yeah, so that's like the biggest skip in the game. The, the final thing that I want to show you is actually inside of the puzzles. Now, uh, this game has a bunch of different um, bunch of different puzzles that you have to solve. Like we said, we go into them when we're doing any percent. But with bonk hopping, you uh, there's a little bit of a different way for you to actually uh, do the puzzles. Or, as I say, what are puzzles? So basically, there are these slide puzzles that you're supposed to uh, do where you have to put the lucky uh, statues on the circles and you have to have them all on the same on the circles at the same time. But with bonk copping and shouts to all pages, you can just do this every single time and bonk cop over uh, the wall because there's no ceiling and you can just skip and every single there we one go. of them. We just, we just <laughs> solved the puzzle. And not only that, we every, what he did there was he went towards the wall uh, against the screen, uh, and that actually skips the text box that uh, the construction worker would uh, give us when entering each puzzle. So for 100% and all pages, uh, this saves a lot of time, like over probably around half an hour to an hour of solving puzzles. Um, so yeah. Anything yeah, else? that was... <laughs> 
That was a uh, super uh, new Super Lucky's Tale. Um, once again, shout out to the community, the Discord, uh, speedruns.com, ESA uh, for allowing this run to be in. It was super fun. Uh, I was really excited when I saw that this game got in. And um, if anybody is interested, just go to the speedrun.com page. Um, we have the Discord on there. And um, I believe the next run is uh, Core Gang by Pete Door. So uh, stay tuned to watch him run that. Yeah, thanks for yes. watching, everybody. Yes, exactly. Before we go into a quick intermission, by the way, I want to quickly shout out the Rhythm Gamer in chat for subscribing to our Twitch channel. And yeah, like I said, we're going to quickly head into an intermission to set up the core gang. And we will be right back, so stay tuned, everybody. <laughs> 